how's the range on your DJI FPV goggles? Is it like pretty good? Or did you hear all these amazing things about the long range and amazing clarity and then you got the goggles and then like 30 or 40 feet away, suddenly the video just craps out and you're like, what is all the fuss about? What am I doing wrong? I'm gonna tell you what you're doing wrong. Maybe. There is a setting in these goggles that if it's set wrong, it means that the goggles never go to full power. They stay down at this little one milliwatt-ish output power and then you get terrible range. And you wonder why. And I'm gonna tell you why. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn something today. Okay, here's how the system is supposed to work. If you look down in the lower right corner of the screen, you should see it says low power, unable to record videos. And what that means is that right now, what that means is that right now the system is at a very, very low output power. And if you try to fly like this, you'll have terrible, terrible range. And the way it's supposed to work is that when I arm the quad, props off on the bench, when I arm the quad, then we see unlocked in the goggles and the system goes to full power mode. And you may have noticed that when you first arm your quad, well, if your system is working correctly, you've noticed this. If you've got the problem we're talking about in this video, you will not have noticed this. That when you first arm your quad, there's a brief glitch in the video and the latency suddenly goes down from like 50 milliseconds to the normal 25 to 30 milliseconds. That's the transition from low power to high power mode. And the reason for this is that the Cadex Vista especially, but also the full size air unit get super, super hot especially if you're at high output power. If you're at 25 milliwatts, it's okay. But at high output power, they overheat and then they go into thermal shutdown. They won't damage themselves, but they'll shut down and stop working and they just want to avoid that. When you're flying, you have airflow blowing over them and it keeps them cool and you don't run into this problem. So you arm the quad, it says unlocked, and then it goes to full power. But in order for that to work, the air unit or the Vista needs to know that you have armed the quad. How does it know? And the answer is it does that using the TX and the RX wires that you hooked up to the flight controller. So what would happen on a quad where it wasn't set up correctly and it wasn't working? Let's see. So here we've got the low power warning, but when I arm, the low power warning doesn't go away. We don't see that unlocked in the lower right. And that tells us that we're at low power and we're gonna get crappy range. Now, if this is not working for you, the first thing you want to do is check your wiring. Uh, I'm borrowing a wiring diagram here from Oscar Leung's site just because it was one of the first images to pop up when I searched for a uh, D DJI wiring diagram. And you can see that here for the air unit, the white RX wire connects to flight controller TX and the gray TX wire connects to flight controller RX. So here we're going to R1 and T1, that's UART1, TX, and RX. And a very common mistake that people make is to get these wires backwards. But if you've got it wrong, don't just indiscriminately flip the wires, look and see if you have it right. And here's an example for how it might be done with Cadex Vista. Again, thank you to Oscar Leung. Uh, the difference with the Cadex Vista is that there is no predefined plug. There are solder pads, but there is a solder pad on the Vista for TX, which goes to flight controller RX, and RX, which goes to flight controller TX. Uh, the difference being that in this case, the color of the wires may not be standardized depending on which wiring harness you're using uh, to wire it up. Now, a lot of flight controllers these days are gonna have pre-made plugs for the DJI Vista and Air Unit. Uh, this is my own JBF7 flight controller. And you can see this plug has T2 and R2 in it. And that is gonna be for this connection. It's also got R1, which is used for the S bus connection if you're using the DJI controller. But you can see here T2 and R2, you need both a TX and an RX for the connection that we're talking about in this video. So now we've verified that the wiring is correct and we know what UART number the TX and RX wires coming from the air unit or the Vista are going to. In my case, it's UART2 because I'm using a JBF7. And we want to make sure that MSP, configuration slash MSP, is enabled for that port number and nothing else. A common mistake is that people will, uh, they'll enable smart audio because they'll think, well, this is a VTX. It's got something to do with smart audio. No. They'll enable serial RX. No. Just MSP on this connection, on this port number.
Now at this point, if your wiring is correct and you have MSP enabled on that UART, then when you plug in the goggles and you plug in the quad, you should see VBAT in the lower right, your battery voltage for the quad, and you should see unlocked in the goggles when you arm the quad. If you see NA in the lower right, it means that that connection is not working. And there's one other thing that can cause that connection not to work, and that is that actually the TX and RX pads, this is especially uh, true on the Vista, the air unit is less susceptible to this. The TX and the RX pads can actually get damaged due to voltage spikes, especially if you're running 6S and not running a capacitor. So there's a test you can do, I'm gonna show you later in this video to tell you if that's uh, causing your problem. But if you don't see VBAT in the lower right and unlocked when you arm the quad, then most likely your wiring is wrong or your ports tab is set up wrong. So you'll wanna go double check that. At that point, you can know that when you arm the quad, you're going to full power. And I'd like to point out that this is completely separate from any issues you may have getting your OSD to work. If, uh, this is the same TX and RX connection that makes the OSD work inside the goggles, but there are a couple other settings that could stop the OSD from working, but that VBAT in the lower right corner is like your, your sign that this connection is working. And if you don't see that, your OSD won't work either. Yeah, crap, it's not working. Look, it says NA. I don't have VBAT down there. My MSP connection isn't working. Oh, I don't have time to fix this. I just want to freaking go fly. Isn't there something I can do to just make this problem go away? Yes. In the goggles, go into the settings menu, go to device, then find auto temp control and just turn it off. And what this is gonna do is, as soon as you plug in the quad, it's gonna go to full power. Your Vista is gonna start overheating and eventually it'll go into thermal, thermal protection and shut down, but you will be at full power all the time and then you just, you know, don't plug in and then you just leave it sitting. Plug in, go fly. I mean, you can just sidestep the problem entirely. And you may want to just disable this option anyway, because if you're using the DJI Smart Controller or you're using the DigiView app that lets you output USB for you hear about this, there's an open source free app that lets you get video out from the USB plug to a PC, to an Android device. I'll put a link in the video description if you want to learn more about that. If you're using any of those things to get video out via USB, you need the temperature protection option turned off. It gets in the way. Um, there are, I can't think of what there are, but there are a few other things that get a little screwy if you've got temperature protection turned on. And so some people prefer to just leave it at full. Bit. If you've got temperature protection turned on and you like crash far out there and then disarm, it goes down to one milliwatt or whatever. And now you can't find it. So some people just prefer to have temperature protection off and run at full power all the time. Again, to reiterate, the DJI Air Unit and Vista will not let themselves be harmed by overheating. They will shut down before they damage themselves, but some people don't like it to be in over, overheat mode anyway. Uh, now, <clears throat> there's one more thing that makes this not work, and I'm scared that it's happened to me because this quad as far as I can tell is set up correctly, but I am not getting VBAT in the lower right. I'm getting NA, and that tells me that connection's not working. I hope I have just screwed up the wiring, but I'm gonna tell you the, the other thing. Now the JBF7 does have a plug for the air unit and the Vista, but I direct soldered these wires because the wires, I built these quads at Rampage because I broke all my quads and the uh, wires that I had with me at Rampage weren't long enough to reach the plug. So I direct soldered them. And we've got the yellow wire here on R2. Is that right? <gasps> it's on R3. Ha, ah, because I direct soldered it. It's not on UART2, it's on UART3, and that's not, it's not working. Whew. But I'm still gonna show you this thing. So, how to tell if you have fried your Vista. Let me get you, let me get another Vista that's not in a quad. Which one am I gonna use? I don't, I don't. What are you looking at? You remember like three months ago when I said on the news there's going to be a Vista shortage for like three months you won't be able to buy Vistas? If you want Vistas, get them now. Well, I took my own advice. <laughs> I stocked up. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your multimeter and you're going to put it into continuity test mode 
and you're going to test continuity between ground and the TX and the RX pads. So here I'm going to touch ground, and here I'm going to touch, uh, I think this is TX, no continuity. And here I'm going to touch RX, no continuity, no beep. Uh, and if I put that into ohms mode and measure resistance, I should see a very large resistance. Like you can see here, three mega ohms of resistance. Likewise, eight mega ohms of resistance. Now that is the state that you should see. If you have damaged your Vista or your air unit, you will get continuity between ground and, uh, and, and the TX and RX pads. There is a what that means is that a voltage spike has come through and it has blown the protection diode that is installed on those lines. You can actually repair the unit by opening it up and desoldering and removing that diode, at which point it'll work again. The, the OSD and the, the MSP connection will work again, but if you get another voltage spike, it could permanently damage the Vista. You, you blew the protection, you, had your, you, you blew your one life. Um, in theory, you could replace the diode if you were really good at soldering and could identify the part. Uh, the best way to make sure that this doesn't happen is to use a capacitor and a TVS diode, also sometimes known as a spike ar arrestor. Uh, I'll put some links in the video description if you want to see what I'm talking about. Um, but th that's, that's how you tell if that's affected you. Um, okay, that's it. If you have short range when you fly, check if you see VBAT in the lower right and if you see unlocked when you go to fly. If you do not see that, if you see low power, unable to record video, this is the problem that's affecting you. You need to get that MSP connection working, which is, you should really do that because you really want to know what your VBAT is and you really want your OSD working in the goggles, right? Or if you can't do that for some reason, turn off temperature protection and at least you can fly for now. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying. Do you see this baby? Isn't he cute? Hit the subscribe button. Join my Patreon. Use my affiliate links. Or just keep watching videos. That's better than nothing. Coco Kaka, subscribe to my daddy.